Welcome back to BS with Brian uh, Simpson. Don't forget, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, you want advice from the advice champ, email us at uh, BS with Brian Simpson at gmail.com. If you want to come see me on tour, I'm going to be at uh, Comedy Works Denver next weekend, July 11th, 12th, and 13th, and 14th. Go ahead and get those tickets right now at ComedyWorks.com. Uh, and, uh, or, or you can go to my website, uh, BrianSimpsonComedy.com. Either way, the tickets is, is available. Uh, and I'm also be at the Comedy Castle in Royal Oak, Michigan on July 25th, 26th, and 27th. Go fuck with that. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, what am I forgetting? Also, yeah, you know, like, subscribe, share, all those other things. Um, if you want, um, it's a, it's 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 an interesting fucking um, it's an interesting day we got going on here. It's an interesting times we live in. And I watched the fucking I watched the debate. Like everybody else, we in the green room watching it, this watching the country fall apart. I mean, basically, it was embarrassing, honestly. Um. That's why I don't root for these niggas. I I I, I think that's the, that's probably the first political debate I've watched in years. Cause I don't I think I knew what it was going. I, you know, like it was obvious to you know. So think about all the t- if you <clears throat> I put it like this: if you watched that debate and you and it didn't affect what you thought about either person, you living under a rock, you know. Or maybe it was obvious to you that we dealing with a. We're dealing with a thing. You know what I mean? I mean, Trump seemed all there, but he wouldn't answer questions, you know, uh, at least not directly. And Biden seemed like halfway there, slipping in and out of, <laughs> I don't know, what the fuck, you know? And, uh, and it's just like, why is that what we have to choose from, you know? I, I guess the Republicans have always known what Trump is. Um, you know, but I, I wonder now if the Democrats can finally admit that Biden ain't, you know what I mean? Working with a full deck, you know, because when I, when I said, when I said it before, I got a lot of kick, a lot of pushback. That's not happening. That's Republican propaganda. And what it was like, no, it's what I'm seeing with my eyes. I ain't get that from a meme or or any of that, like I didn't get it from from uh from Fox News. Like I watch I watched the motherfucker talk. So yeah, I learned I learned it from watching what I see with my own fucking eyes. There's no, you know, you know, is he, is he the first president to be completely out of it? No, but he's the first one that we can't that is they really can't hide it. You know, they really can't hide it because of we because we live in the social media age, you know, and, and he and he's running again. You know, Reagan was on the decline sort of right after his he got reelected. So, he, you know, he didn't have to be out in the public eye that often, you know, but and it wasn't the social media ever, you know, Biden. And, and I'm still see, you know, a lot of you blue, no matter who's fucking idiots y'all you forget that biden was not your first choice none of y'all was ca- none of y'all was caping for biden when uh before he was the candidate in, in the last election then it, you know then it turned to blue no matter who right and, and that's your problem that's why you keep getting whatever because they know that they know they can force anybody down your throat and you're gonna blue no matter who and that's why you keep getting whoever, no matter what. You keep getting whoever they want instead of whoever you want. You know what I mean? It's like, this motherfucker, like, I'm I'm not in the blue no matter who camp. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if Trump could ever get my vote. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm voting for Biden. I'm going to be straight up with y'all. I just can't. I just can't. You know? I, you know, maybe this will be the first time in forever that I just don't vote. I don't know. Maybe I'll write in. Uh, maybe I'll write in Mickey Mouse or some shit. I don't know. But you know, it's just sad. It's just sad. We're the laughing stock of the world right now, of the English speaking world. You know, 
that's what it feel like to me. Like, like how far we've fallen where we got to choose between a con man and an invalid to be president. You know, the guy that's perfect. The guy that's you know this is this is where Biden killed me because that's because that's what happens. The Democrats always get in office and then fucking betray us. They they just get in office, but you know the same the same people that say the same dude that says that's cool with late term abortion because it's a woman's body and it's her choice. You know it is out on legalizing marijuana federally. You know, I know they rescheduled it or whatever, but come on. And it that took a lot of pressure and, and, and prodding, you know? And it's like, I just don't, I, I'm just, I'm, and maybe, the, I don't want you to be a cynic like me. I'm, you know, I'm a special kind of, kind of uh, mentally uh, <laughs> uh, diminished. You know what I mean? So I forgot my tablet, so I'm, I'm working off the phone here today. Um, uh, update on the Young Thug YSL trial. Fucking Judge Thug Granville um, has kicked the motion to recuse to a different attorney. I don't know who, whoever whoever keeping up with my YSL trial people. You know all the snaggle pusses, <laughs> all the beaver pusses keeping up with the YSL trial. Um, the motion to recuse has been moved. They're going to release the transcripts of the ex parte meeting in full. All of a sudden, you know them. You know them make the real transcripts. This this judge went from, I'm not releasing them to I released them, but I but redacted to I'm releasing them in full, and there's nothing incriminating in there. <sighs> Man, I I have no idea how this trial is going to move forward, but I know that if there's no penalty for this prosecutor or this judge. You need to move out of the state of Georgia. For real. You need to move out of the state of Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that's a black judge and a black prosecutor doing that to a black man. So just, you know, so you, you, you it, it, so it's, it's wild to me how few people have an issue with what's going on because they can't call it racism. But that's exactly what, it's like, it's like, it's like you have to have a problem with, because here's here's what I've I've said a million times. And listen, if you're if you're watching this and you lost, you have no idea what I'm talking about. It would take up this whole episode for me to catch you up to explain from the beginning. Because here's the thing: I don't even know shit about the trial. Like, this is just the drama surrounding the trial. This is just the this. I started paying attention when this happened. Not this trial been going on for I think almost two years now. I haven't. Heard us? I haven't paid attention to a single fucking thing about this trial for two years, until this judge had a secret meeting with the prosecutor and the witness and everything that followed. Right. So it, you can go back to previous episodes, or or you can go. There's way more in depth uh, things. Uh, there's channels that cover these type of things specifically. I, I recommend you know the lead attorney is somebody I like to tune into. Um, He's got a couple of people involved on there to speak on it. Um, uh, there's a couple other channels I can't think of off the top of my head, but like they, they cover it more more in depth. But my point is, <clears throat> regardless of how you feel about any of these people involved, you know, it's the same thing. You know, it, it's similar to what happened to Trump in New York. It's similar to this, right? Where it's like some of y'all are so focused on the result that you don't care about the process, and the process is the only thing that protects you. You know what I mean? Because, because, you know, sometimes those prosecutors and those and, and certain detectives and all those, they're privy to information to where they know the motherfucker guilty. They know the motherfucker guilty. But they still got to follow the process because you, the court is not about what you know. It's about what you can prove. And it has to be that way to maintain fairness because if you didn't have to prove things, then, then we that's a real slippery path to tyranny. And that's what that's what it seemed like they living in down there in Fulton County. Where it's like if that prosecutor got, got a grudge, she can find a way to convict you. And you and so it doesn't matter that young thug's probably guilty. You know what I mean? That has nothing to do with any of this. I don't give a fuck if he go to prison or don't. 
my concern is that the process isn't fair no more. And if they're if they're allowed to continue after this shit, you know, then the process will be corrupt from this point forward. And it, you know, and it's probably been corrupt for quite some time. I mean, Fulton County's got some got a reputation already of railroading people and keeping people locked up indefinitely and shit like that, like pre-trial, locked up for a decade without a trial, shit like that down there in Fulton County, Georgia. And this is Judge Glanville is the head judge of, of Fulton County. And so if you think these motherfuckers ain't, if you think this is the first time a prosecutor's had a meeting with a judge to intimidate a witness, you know, I got a bridge to sell you in Brooklyn because it's been corrupt down there. And who knows what this other judge, because this is another thing, the, the motion to recuse is being kicked to another judge, and Judge Glanville is acting like he's, he's got nothing to do with whoever that is. You know, he's got nothing to do with the process. He has nothing to, come on, man. You, you know, I don't, because he was very comfortable throwing his power around. I have no idea how high the corruption goes, but usually it's because, you know, usually there's a, there's a piece of shit above the piece of shit. So we'll see. We'll see how everything go down there, but, you know, that's what it is. Now, to the emails. Let's see. Uh, I usually try to start with these so I don't forget. Um, please share your comments and or thoughts on the Evanston, Illinois reparations payment offering. What? Let's see here. Evanston Local Reparations. Oh, this nigga, he didn't send me an article. He sent me, like, the city's website. Let me see it. <clears throat> Direct Descendants Reparations Disbursement Order. How many individuals, um, staff anticipates dispersing reparations funds to at least 80 direct descendants in 2024? There might be more disburse, disbursement pending the tax received from the second cannabis dispensary, which is anticipated to open a so what is this? You know, this doesn't explain what this is about. So let's look it up. Um, like, how are you just going to send me the, the city's website? <laughs> uh, come on, man. Like, you know, I don't read these until I see them. We, ain't got, we don't got people doing research out here. Um, okay, here we go. An actual article about it. Uh, as a child, Robin Ruth Simmons didn't know the Everton neighborhood she called home was an area where black families were once forced to live. Ruth Simmons grew up just north of Chicago in Everton's Fifth Ward, where banks refused to give mortgage loans to black families until 1969 in Everton. Black people were restricted to a certain portion of the Fifth Ward and excluded from other parts of the city. The area was, di was disinvested in, stripped of a neighborhood school and access to health care. There were specific anti-black zoning laws and housing practices that are responsible for our racial segregation, not only physical segregation, but our wealth gaps of home ownership gaps and all that. Discriminatory housing policy. Yeah, I'm all I'm all for this. I see where this is going. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, because I know some some of y'all are certain type of whites. The idea of reparations pisses you off. You know what I mean? But, you know, to... I just, I just think that makes that. I think that makes you a hypocrite. You know what I mean? <clears throat> because <clears throat> these same, you know, these same type, these same pull yourself up by the bootstrap type of motherfuckers don't understand. You know, because you go, oh well, your your family should be more responsible with money and all this other bullshit. And it's like, no, 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 your family should have been more responsible with money. Because there were not specific laws to keep you from having generational wealth to pass on to your family. You know what I mean? So I, I'm all about the reparations, wherever the fuck they give it at that. You know, it seemed it seemed like they pay they gonna pay 80 people. And, and it, you know, and I I don't need to read the rest of the article. I know they they probably whatever this area is, they probably destroyed it. There's like there's like hundreds of black towns that are underwater or pay, or bulldozed or bombed or whatever. Thriving black communities that were doing just fine, that were just stripped of everything, moved down, highways built over, lakes, you know, flooded to make a lake and all this other shit. So, you know, it, it, I don't, I've stopped arguing with white people about this kind of shit where that's ignorant of the history. You know what I mean? And because some of you are well aware of the history and just don't give a fuck. 
but but to but but you like to live in this la la land where where the history don't affect the present. That that's what that's the disconnect. You think, oh yeah, horrible things happen, but that has nothing to do with now. You know, you weren't a slave. Well, listen, slavery was just the tip of the iceberg. Slavery was followed by Reformation and Jim Jim Crow. You know, and and so you know that that wasn't. <laughs> you know that that wasn't that long ago. That wasn't 400 years ago. That was this is 1969. They talking about that's you know that's that's like my mama's alive then. Your mama was alive, so you know like your mama that's still alive. She was alive. So to act like oh that was a long time ago. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. They just now started letting niggas keep the little bit of money they was making after after centuries. Of, of of suppressing wages and opportunity to health care and opportunity to fresh food and access to fresh water and uh, and investing in the in the neighborhood schools and all of that shit not letting you know the red line ain't not letting niggas buy houses at all not allowing motherfuckers to invest all of those things you know so to turn around to people now and go you don't deserve reparations and I don't know how much they're getting but that's just these just the niggas they can directly trace to have been been affected. Yeah, now it is. Right? Yeah, yeah. But it but like he like like the article said, a lot of people don't know that that was a black neighborhood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so it's like that's what I mean is like, you know, you got the gentrification, you got the motherfucking redlining, all those things I just named. And so if people get a little money, I don't give a fuck. That's America. This is America, you know? And it's, I think this is probably in my whole life I've heard of, uh, maybe this is three three times, three towns have done this, some kind of reparation. Not nearly what was deserved, you know? But, uh, but that's neither here nor there. And, and you know what's so funny is, you know, the funny thing is, had they paid reparations when it was promised, it wouldn't even have mattered because they would have they would have took it all anyway. They'd have took all that wealth, all that land. They would have snatched that shit up real fast. It would have been awesome though if there had been like a black reservation. If they'd have just gave us Arizona, you know, gave every nigga forty acres in Arizona, that would have been dope. You know what I'm saying? Real close to African climate or something. I'd have been cool with that. I'd have been real cool with that. But whatever. I digress. Yeah, I don't have a problem with this at all. Now, you know, obviously, I stopped reading halfway through the article. Maybe there's some fuckery going on that I did that I missed. But uh, but people that have a problem with reparations, I don't I don't understand. I don't understand you. I don't understand where you're coming from. <clears throat> Update to engage in an affair with a married woman. Episode 90, timestamp 3820. Hmm. I'm 23 years old and in college, and I met this girl in my class a year ago whom initially I was trying to hook up with, but soon found out that she is married. She is two years younger than me and got married to her high school sweetheart. They've been in a relationship for six years now. After learning she was married, I disregarded the idea of being a homewrecker, and I thought I could just be friends with her, but after a year of us getting to know each other, in and out of class, and getting very close, we eventually started having sex and have been seeing each other even more than before. This has been going on for almost two months. Aside from wrestling with the clear moral dilemma of invading someone's relationship, I have developed what I feel to be real feelings for this girl. Some backstory on me. <clears throat> I've had self-esteem issues my whole life and constantly feeling capable of being loved or sincerely loving myself. Okay. Welcome to the club. In essence, this girl makes me feel seen and like somebody cares about me. But I know even if she gets a divorce, it's a bad idea to consider something long-term with her. All my friends and family who I've discussed this with have told me it's a bad idea and have wisely advised me to end my relationship with this girl. I understand that there are plenty of fish in the sea. However, even before we started getting intimate, I was feeling a real connection with her. I don't feel justified calling it love because I've never been in love before and don't know what it feels like. But it feels like more than just lust. In addition to how... She makes me feel she has told me that she cares about me deeply and thinks about how she wishes she was in a serious relationship with me. I understand this is all talk, and ultimately she isn't good for me, and the right thing to do is to stop talking to her. My question is, do you see any way of getting out of this where no one gets hurt, or should I accept the fact that I've just fucked this woman's life up and that 
One way or another, I have to learn how to move on and how to love myself. Love the show. P.S. You're probably wondering, how does this dude not know or her mans has to know? Well, they both have each other's locations, but she assures me that she has it taken care of. I've asked her, is, she, is he violent? And she said, no. Otherwise, I wouldn't have married him. But no one really knows how a person will react until it happens. So because I'm paranoid and refuse to believe this dude is as dumb or clueless as he appears, I assume that he's either willfully ignoring it because he loves her too much or he's cheating with someone else or he's plotting my murder. Who knows at this point? Listen, first of all, it is a bad idea. And guess what? You're going to do it anyway. You're going to do it anyway. You're, you're not special, my guy. You're getting some good pussy from somebody that loves you for the first time in your life or you feel loved. You ain't going to be able to quit that cold turkey. Stop lying to yourself. Because if you could stop, you would stop. You wouldn't be writing me. You already know. You know what I mean? You already know you shouldn't be doing it. You're still doing it. And, you, and it might be real love. I mean, if, if you feel like you really love, I don't know. It might be real love. It's still a bad idea. But love and all that stuff you said, I mean, I've, we've all fallen into the trap. You feel love for the first time. You feel attractive. You feel desired by a woman that you really got feelings for. And you think you're going to be able to quit that cold turkey? Listen, bro, pussy have brought down empires without love involved. But pussy and love, that's going to... That, that is the most powerful stuff on earth. A drop of that. If the Sackler family could bottle that shit, they would have everybody hooked on that. If you could get love and pussy in a pill, it would ruin the, the, the species. So what I'm saying is you're right. All, all the stuff you're saying is right. You shouldn't, but you will, and you got to forgive yourself for whatever for happens as a result. Hi, Brian. After hearing your thoughts on my first email and knowing that everything you said was spot on and that I needed to get this woman out of my life a month later during our winter break between classes, I tried to end things. I called her up <laughs> and told her how the whole situation made me think less of myself and the fact of her husband having her location, despite whatever precautions she'd been taking, was making me extremely paranoid. Ah, uh, yeah. I even wrote her a letter with the same sentiment saying that I don't want us to hook up anymore, but I said that we could still be friends. Mm, that's a mistake. You can't just be friends with somebody you've been fucking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, like, I don't know why people think this. Oh, we just friends. No, you're not. No, you're not. There's no way somebody gave you some pussy and you just a friend. Now, listen, you can go back. You can get close to friends, but you'll never be all the way just friends. It, you know, if it's levels to it. it you, you know what I'm saying? If somebody gave you some pussy in the past, you, you know, the the chances of them get the chances of you fucking them in the future are not zero. That's all I'm saying. And then you know once the fuck once you fuck again, then it's it you know you know started it back up. So let's see where this goes. Like they're gonna I guarantee they're gonna fuck again. We'll see. She would always say that no matter what happened, she still wanted me to be in her life. She had never had anybody in her life whom she had let in emotionally or talked as freely with, not even her husband. In essence, I was the first person to make her feel seen as well, and it was just as intoxicating for her. Fast forward to the start of the next semester, and we are in another class together. We hadn't spoken for two months, and as anyone could have predicted, we started hooking up again. Yep. Anyone. I'm anyone. I initiated it. <laughs> That's not a surprise either. I missed her and her body, and I felt just as lonely then as I had before. From there, our dynamic practically escalated into a relationship. We started buying each other gifts for each other. I still live with my parents, and then bringing her over multiple times, she met my parents. She started asking if she could meet my friends. There were even a few times she called me babe. As everything incrementally intensified, pussy has brought down empires, in quotes. Yeah, that's true. That was in your response during that episode. Played on repeat in my head. Pussy has brought down several empires. One night, we went out to our usual bar spot, she says she got blackout drunk a week prior and woke up at home in her bed alone. Confused, she went out into the living room and found her man sleeping on the couch. When she asked why he wasn't in the bed with her, he pulled out her phone and opened up to our text. When I asked if he knew her passcode beforehand, she said, yes, he's always had it. Good Lord. She told me that she would delete most of our conversations, but that sometimes, but this time she wasn't thorough enough. She says she was able to explain it away, and in the morning when she asked if he was upset, he said, no, explain it away. She tried to assure me that he still trusted her, but I adamantly refuted it. Then she told me a story of when she confessed to him in high school that she had kissed another guy while they were together. Her then-boyfriend said he'd forgive her, 
but that he never wanted to talk about it. She internalizes forgiveness as a consequence-free hall pass for any action she might take in the future. As she's telling me all this, I'm reeling back in my chair in shock because I know that if I was this dude, I would be waiting outside of this bar right now. And then I then repeatedly tell her how delusional she is uh, and is acting and that her awareness of her delusions means nothing if it's not followed by action. There you go, my nigga. We soon left the bar to talk more in the car. After talking for a little bit, she asks why I'm not saying anything. So I tell her, because I'm looking at myself like I've been stuck in this clear cage, like I'm in a zoo watching spectators walk by thinking, how did I get here and where did the time go? She then starts crying and says, I didn't want you to feel that way. On the inside, this made me furious because it just cemented how detached she is from reality and that she'll continue to abstain from any responsibility or culpability. In the moment, however, I didn't say any of this because I'm not the kind of person to lash out at someone, but I knew that out of respect for myself, I couldn't continue doing this. This is long. A week later, after not contacting her, she called me asking when we could see each other again, and I told her I didn't want to see her until the end of the summer. Then a few days later, I sent her this long text, essentially saying, you have issues, and I'm going to leave you to them. Please respect this boundary, and I haven't heard from her since. Good on you. To borrow some words from your grandma and mom, nothing is worth your peace. You're absolutely fucking right. Congrats on the special. Keep doing what you're doing, and thanks for the advice. P.S. Sorry for the long email. No, you're not. I tried to keep it concise, but kept as many pertinent details as I thought were necessary. If you're curious what the text was that he found, it was me sending closer by Nine Inch Nails with the caption underneath, us in the bed. Some simp shit for real. Some simp shit indeed. Listen, that Man, that was a fucking roller coaster. Um, yeah, you got it out of there just in time. I don't know what kind of man her, her husband is, but that nigga definitely don't trust her. <laughs> you feel me? Like, what are you talking about? He, she, she explained it away. Well, you, bitch, you explained it away? How did you explain that, bitch? Another man who caught you before, several times before, finds, finds, is texting you. I mean, sorry, your husband who caught you several times with another man was so he so he was going through your phone in the first place. Right? And now and he got your password. Yeah, miss everything's under control. He got your password. And another man texts you closer by nine inch nails and says, This is us in bed. And you explain that away? How you do that? How you explain that to your hood? Like, like I'm I'm trying to tell you, man, like. And, and and I don't even need to see a picture of her. This bitch bad. I guarantee she bad as hell. Because that, that's the type, like, that's this is one of those girls, like, she learned at a young age the power she has over men. She one of those, like, fine, fine women that always get away with everything because she's so, she so pretty. Because she probably fine and cute, which is a deadly combination. Because cute is, cute is more powerful than sexy. But if you both, ooh, that, you know, because people are do, people, you know, men and women respond to cuteness. It's, it's, it's deep in our DNA that when we see cute mammals, it fucking, it, it makes your guard go down. You, it's like seeing a baby something, you know? So cute and sexy, this, this girl probably, she, because she don't give a fuck if that nigga kill you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what I'm trying to say to you. She, you know, as much, and I get it, and you probably still miss her now. And please forgive yourself. And she definitely gonna pop up back in your, pop back up in your life in the future. You know what I mean? Maybe she gonna be single. Maybe she gonna be dead. I don't know. But you know, she, she got no intention of leaving the husband, and and you might get weak again, or whatever the fuck it is. But I'm telling you, like, she she has no thought for the chaos around her. Like, cause I know, I know women like that. You, you, and you, this ain't the last woman like this you're going to encounter. That's just, you know, you meet, you meet them a half, it's a, it's rare women out there that's like, they just fine without trying. You know, this, you know, these people, they just fine without trying. They, they you know, they, they treat their body like a fucking dumpster. They don't work out. They don't eat right. They don't meditate, nothing, but they, they just fine anyway. You know what I mean? And, they just never, they never take responsibility for nothing. Because think about it. If you ain't even got to try to be sexy, 
which is the thing that every everybody wants to be. Think about that. All the effort, all the industry, all the millions of trillions, probably not trillions yet, but billions, hundreds of billions of dollars industry to make people look better. And it's, and it's rare people out there that just look good no matter what. Just roll out of bed, fucking fine. You know what I'm saying? Splash some water in their face, fine. You know what I'm saying? Metabolism on point. Facial features on point. Skin clear. And they smoke, drink, pop pills, all that. They still just, you know, they ain't going to last. All that shit catch up. But I'm just saying. It's, it's, so imagine if you, if, imagine if all the thing, all these other people got to put in all this effort to obtain, to be sexy. And you just got it for free. You ain't going to, it's like don't, you grow up not really putting no effort in and nothing except manipulation. You know what I'm saying? And Because and, this girl probably genuinely care about you, but in the way that she know how to care. You know what I'm saying? But, but like, this is the type of bitch that if she woke up and had a superpower where, where, every, where every building she walked past, a part of it exploded, she wouldn't even know. She wouldn't even know. You know what I'm saying? She would just be walking down the street. Boom, boom, boom. Not even... Not, not ever connecting her to the explosions. She wouldn't even know she had a superpower. You know what I'm saying? This is, this, this is the type of woman you're dealing with. She's just bad and is never, ever going to deal with no consequences. And then the, and then the, the crime is to get out of jail free card. Because a cute bitch crying, a cute, fine bitch crying, rarely faces consequences. You, you know what I'm saying? It's just that simple. It's just that simple. And so... I don't know what her wake up call will ever, or if it'll ever be one. I don't know if she'll ever really truly reflect on her own behavior because she don't feel bad about none of that shit. If her husband had got up and found that text, if her husband had, had, had found that text, and instead of going to sleep on the couch, if he'd have came to your motherfucking house and beat you to death, you know what she would have said? I didn't mean for it to happen. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. Beat it. I it was I wasn't on purpose. You know what I'm saying? And and how many and, and it would have just been and that would have just been that. And she'd have went on and did it to the next nigga. You know? So I don't know. I'm I, and I'm 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 I don't discourage love, but I could just tell I could just tell this bitch bad. And if she not bad, shame on you, nigga. Shame on you. If you if you letting the Ugg mug do this to you. If you letting a cave troll do this to you, shame on you, sir. Respect your dick more than this. You know what I'm saying? Try to eat right, go to the gym, have some, have some, have some something about you. Cause it, cause this is this story only makes sense if we talking about a bad bitch. And I and, and I'm not talking about plastic bad. I'm not talking about contrived bad. I'm not talking about fashion. You know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about them, them one of them ones. If we ain't talking about one of them, this story don't make no fucking sense to me. If you doing this for a regular bitch, if you going through this for a regular bitch, you need to be ashamed of yourself, sir. You, this is That's absurd. So again, I'm making a lot of assumptions. I ain't seen a picture of this lady. Um, but, but again, you know, it can't be, you can't be that lonely where a regular bitch got you putting your in the danger zone. You know what I'm saying? You can't be putting your dick in the danger zone for regular shit. I totally understand when you just get captivated, though. You know what I'm saying? So, and it ain't always somebody that's conventionally attractive that could put that spell on you. It's people out here that they just got a some, they, you know, the French call it the je ne sais quoi. Some people just got that je ne sais quoi. I get that. I get that. But tell me it's that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just meeting the family and the friends. Mm. And and listen, my prediction is you gonna fuck her again. You gonna fuck her again, cause you uh, you know it's that's how that, that's just how it goes. You young, you know that loneliness ain't gonna go away. I don't know why you're lonely, cause if you pulling women like this, it's other women out there. Cause that's the other thing. If and you might not you might be so enamored with this woman that you don't even realize like when other women seeing you with her, they think you more attractive. When women see you with an attractive woman, you're more attracted to them. I'm not saying they all just automatically attracted to you, but if a if 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 a woman saw you as a five and they see you with a bad bitch that's all loving on you and shit, 
Now you were eight. Now you, and I don't know why that is. I don't know why it, it's something about the, 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 the competitiveness of it or, or it makes you intriguing or something. But, but, I, but, but I know for a fact, like women want men that other women want. That, that, it's just that simple. If you like, if you get that, that's why that's why it be so many women out here getting cheated on and shit because they want they want the dude that can get bitches. You know they and they know they can smell it on you. They can smell the dog on you, and there's something about that that's a, that's attractive to a lot of people. They they want what other women want. They don't want just whoever. You know, so I'm I'm surprised that other women didn't pop up on your radar while you was gallivanting with this one. But, you know, again, I'm making a lot of assumptions about your situation without knowing many details, which kind of makes me a hypocrite because I gave you shit for the email being long. Uh, you know, but again, we're not, we not reading your autobiography over here. We just, you know, I'm just saying, learn to forgive yourself. You're going to slip up again. You're going to slip and fall into that pussy. And, you know, but unlike her, you're going to take responsibility for that. Whatever you do, don't come inside this woman, sir. Cause, cause that's gonna be the next move. She ain't talking to you now, but I, but I guarantee you, if she pop back up in your life, sir. If she, because the husband gonna get tired, the husband gonna get tired of her shit at some point. You ain't gonna be living with your parents at some point. Cause keep in mind, she might not be talking to you, but she keeping tabs on you. I'm trying to tell you some good shit. And the next time you see this bitch, she, she gonna be divorced, and she gonna want you to come inside her. Her plan is gonna be to latch on to another mother. Cause she clearly don't love the husband. She's fucking you on the side a couple times, but she must. She's benefiting from that situation somehow, probably financially, or stability. And you living with your mama. As soon as you stable, this bitch gonna pop up. Know this. Know this. She gonna pop up, and as soon as you put your dick, she gonna be like, come inside me. And you, but you gotta, you gotta be strong with the force. You gotta be strong with the force. I'm trying to tell you some good shit. She gonna try to lock you down, my nigga. <laughs> She gonna try to lock you down. Or not. Or not. Again, I don't know her. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my whole opinion of it. Just be be on the be on the horizon, be on the lookout for these, for these things. Cause it, it's it's gonna occur. That's just how I I'm 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 getting a psychic image of I'm getting a psychic, it's flashing in my mind. All these things I'm saying are just flash images flashing in my mind. I'm just describing to you. But I could be totally fucking wrong about everything. <clears throat> um, all right, we got any more emails that I want to read? This unique animal farm operates below a Florida jail. Earlier this year, one animal farm in Florida made headlines for its rather unique location. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office operates the farm below its detention center, which sits on stilts at Stock Island in the Florida Keys. The whole thing started in 1994 after the sheriff's office noticed ducks being struck by cars at a cross between the jail and a nearby golf course. One of the deputies suggested rounding them up and putting them on this unused piece of property beneath the jail. Um, okay, so it's ducks and goats and lambs and shit. Um, I mean, you know, I, I think a lot of people have a problem with prisoners having tranquility. Like, they want prison to be dangerous and rapey and shit. Um, but I don't think that's what's best for society. I mean, this I think this is the problem with the punitive nature of our judicial system. Um, not that some people don't deserve to be punished, but the fact, but the idea that that punishment should be in perpetuity is is really what my problem is. Is like, um, you know, j jail being prison being a violent environment for people that aren't going to stay there for life just means that you're. It, it just makes it a factory for violent people to go back into society. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, I don't have a problem with it being a fucking duck pond or, or I don't have a problem with like roommates taking care of shit. We, we had one prison with a, uh, where roommates got a cat for, for good behavior. You know, I don't have a problem with that at all. Cause that'll fucking teach you patience and tell me some good shit. You get the right cat. You gonna have to learn some, a thing or two. My cat's no angel. She, you know, she could be a sweetheart, but she can be a fucking cunt. And you got to learn, you know, you got to learn a little patience with a cat, you know. They was giving roommates cats. I don't know if they were giving puppies or, like, giving dogs. Because it's hard to keep a dog 
inside or whatever. But uh, but goats and chickens and ducks and, you know, there's a couple of prisons with gardens that the roommates tend to and shit like that. You know, so I don't have a problem with that at all. Like anything to keep motherfuckers calmer and safer so they get whatever, to, you know, get the demons out. Thai teacher caught live streaming under skirt while teaching. Well, listen, bitch got to make money on the side. But what are we talking about? You, you, that just means you're not paying teachers enough. How did she get caught, though? That Okay, we do need to know this. Okay, this is important. <laughs> How did she get caught? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, oh, so another, a student caught. She was in the classroom. Oh, well, that's, well, that's, that's crazy in the classroom. But still, that ain't got, what that got to do with everybody else? You know, what What that got to do with, with, you know, mind your business. Man, I don't, I don't, I think we're going to look back and realize it wasn't a good idea to have everybody walking around with cameras. Um, and, and more Korea news. North Korea executed a man for listening to K-pop. See, that makes sense to me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I think, um, I think that you can't have no fun in North Korea. Imagine that. You know, what what make this Kim Jong guy so fucking unbelievable is that he was raised, like he got to leave North Korea for Europe and go to college in Europe. And, you know, he got to go to parties and do drugs and fuck hoes and listen to music. You know, he's a big fan of Dennis Rodman. But wh so why he don't want none of his people to have fun? Where's the government Mali in North Korea? Tell everybody it comes from the great leader. Why they out there? Dooch, 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 dooch. Just, just keep lying to them. To, hey, yeah, yo, Kim Jong made all these songs. Dooch, 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 dooch. Like, like, because if if you're gonna be if you're gonna be this kind of authoritarian dictator, okay, why why does it require everyone to suffer? I don't understand why those go hand in hand. Why can't everyone have fun? You know, are you afraid if you give them drugs, they're gonna start thinking for themselves? Like at least once, once a year, it should be. Uh, it should be the whole country should be on Molly, all courtesy of the royal leader. You know what I mean? Or something. But to be like, oh, they were listening to Korean pop music, so death. I mean, they probably got put to death for possessing it. Because how did you get it? I mean, where did you get smuggled in? I get that, but but still, why does that bother you? That somebody was listening to music. What are they allowed to do over there? I would love to know. Are they only allowed to listen to government-made music and go only watch government-made TV shows? They only do government. Like ah, you're the worst dictator. You're the worst dictator that I've ever heard. Cause no, cause no one can have fun. At least they even had fun in Russia when there was a dictatorship. Chinese people can have fun. North Koreans can't have no fun. Cubans was having a ball. Some of them. Nobody in North Korea is having a good time. That's nuts. I I just I don't understand. Like I mean, get because that reveal who you are. You're a boring dullard. You'll do nothing type of motherfucker. Because given supreme power and supreme leadership, that's the country you chose to have. Just a dull, gray, everything 90 degrees, nothing's on beat. Everybody got to be like, we love you. We love you, sir. Even though you don't do anything for <laughs> Fuck that. Fuck that. I don't, I don't get it at all. Like, what type of person becomes, I, I think that would be an interesting thought experiment. Like, who would you be if you were supremely, or, or let me rephrase that. What would your country be like if you were supreme, unquestionable leader? Think about that. That's what kind of fucking person you are. Kim Jong-un is a fucking dull retard. It's, it, that's the only explanation. Nobody's allowed to have any fun at all, period. No fun. At least remix the at least remix the rest of music for your like how, how do you not how do you not 
want anybody to enjoy themselves? What do you want your regime to be? I wish I understood it more. I wish I could talk to like an expert on the culture. You know what I'm saying? That's what should happen. Instead of trying to assassinate this nigga, the FBI or the, C the uh, CIA need to be trying to sneak Molly water into this palace. I'll be doing the same thing and I'll be doing the same thing in Russia. Putin ain't never did no shrooms, nigga. You know this. Putin and Kim Jong-un ain't never been on no psilocybin, nigga. I'll be, I would get a psilocybin MDMA concoction of the purest form. And it don't even matter if they know it was like this you know, get get you a supersonic bow gun and blow that motherfucker over the board. Hit that nigga in the neck. Him and his sister. Kim Jong-un and the serious-looking ass sister. Hit they ass in the ass with, with that Molly psilocybin concoction and see if they don't come out that motherfucker with some ideas. Nigga. Hit Putin with that shit, with that motherfucking psilocybin. Nigga. You know? I don't know. I... I I just, I just, this type of, this type of shit just piss, just piss me the fuck off. I guess, I, I guess, I, I, uh, I mean, I guess, you know, just dictatorships in general should piss you off, but, but the worst kind of dictatorship, he's, he's the worst kind of dictator, you know, because he's not at least like, you know, a Pol Pot type of motherfucker just kill people and starve people, but he want people to, he want people to just live nothing lives forever. So they die. Just nothing. Just nothing. Uh, imagine you get home from work in North Korea. You sit down. You turn on the TV. Oh, I wonder what's on today. Oh, more North Korea. Oh, okay. Uh! They number one channel is probably just a brick wall with the leader's face on it. You know? Where's the drama? Where's the suspense? Where's the ideas? Where's the art? Where's the... It's none of that shit. No, think about that. Not a single person in North Korea has a PlayStation. Nobody's on the there's whatever their version of the Billboard charts is. All top, all they Billboard 100 is all Kim Jong Un. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's Kim Jong Un covering <laughs> Mariah Carey songs or some shit. I just the idea of living there just makes me. Like if I ever if I woke up and I, and I if I woke up in North Korea tomorrow I would kill myself no doubt about it. There's no reason and niggas want to visit. There's no reason to visit. There ain't no reason to go there. It's nothing there. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing there where you would be like, well, you know, it is North Korea, but you gotta see the. What is, what is it? There's nothing there. Name a thing. Name one thing where you would be like, I need to go there just so I can lay eyes on what. Just so I can experience. Mm. You know, oh, the cuisine. What? What cuisine? What is the what North Korean cuisine is there? I because I, when when I say North Korean cuisine, what comes to mind? Just a pot with fucking beets in it and rocks. I don't know. Meanwhile, they up in the palace with fucking pork chops and General Toast chicken and motherfucking gravy and molly, and fucking weed, you know, biscuits, cookies, cakes, and everybody, else, everybody outside just eating potato paste or whatever the fuck they giving people to eat over there. I don't know. Uh, that's been our episode. Uh, we do this each and every week live from Soundshed Studios in Austin, Texas. I'll see y'all next time. Keep it tight, people, puss.